integrating elements into your footage might be a tough task, but this is one of the major parts of any VFX shot production. Today we're talking about things you have to consider before and during tracking process. Firstly, the opening sequence is a sneak peek on one of my next tutorials in which we will talk about animation essentials. Just wanted to point that out because the drone you've seen there is usually not hanging like that. It's a really energetic and friendly little drone. I will also place it in my store and you will be able to buy that fully rigged and textured model because I think it will be useful for a lot of you to have that insight on a model like that. Stay tuned until then. So tracking. I already covered some of the tracking techniques in my previous uh, tutorials. If you want to learn how to track stuff in Cinema 4D, you might want to look up my how to add objects to your footage tutorial. If you want to track stuff in After Effects, you might want to watch my how to add snow to your footage tutorial. Apart from these super duper softwares, we have Boju, Bojo, Synthize uh, and others available. But today I will use PF Track, which is my main tracking software because it's node based. I love nodes. You should love nodes as well. We will also concentrate on things you should consider before and during tracking process. So what's so special about node uh, workflow in tracking? It's really convenient, especially under tight deadlines, because I can go to any stage of tracking and change it if needed without destructing everything that was done after which is super cool. Now let's discuss terminology a bit. You probably heard uh, uh, words like tracking and match moving, but have you ever thought what's the difference? I personally think there is no difference and it's up to personal preference, but what we use in our workflow tracking refers to scene uh, tracking, the camera movements of the scene. And match moving uh, refers to object uh, tracking on top of camera track. And we will have a look at both of those tracking methods. Several notes for those of you who are DPs, on-set VFX supervisors, or anyone who's shooting videos themselves. Always remember that in order to track something, you need enough of trackable points in your scene. Most of the shots have enough natural points uh, in them that are trackable. Furniture corners, windows, doors, anything that have quite sharp angles and enough contrast in it. So if you know that there will be 3D elements in your scene, make sure that you have enough you know, tracking data. Another quite important thing to remember is you want your shots to have that parallax depth. It's not necessarily something that will obscure the scene like plants or I don't know, furniture, but the depth of a room, for instance, so that you would have planes to track, it will help a lot. Write down the lenses you used for each shot and include crop factor if there was a crop factor. For instance, red cameras, they can shoot enormous resolutions, but if you will increase frame rate, uh, resolution will go down and it means that you will have crop factor. If you were using 35 millimeter lens, it won't be 35 millimeters anymore. You will have to multiply your focal length by crop factor and then you will have your kind of real focal length. It's a big topic worth separate video, which I might do in future. But for now, just keep in mind that this is something you might want to research about your camera and lenses. So keeping notes about the lenses you used and crop factors will uh, make VFX artists life 100 times easier and it will ensure the correct look of 3D elements in your scene. If you need to add uh, VFX stuff into a close up shot, uh, you can either manually match the camera movements, which is a pain, or add additional markers into your scene. I will go deeper in details about that in future tutorials when we will talk about green screens. Another tip, if you want to digitally stabilize your footage, do it after VFX stage. This shot demonstrates why. In this case, I used warp stabilizer in uh, Adobe Premiere 
which did a good job, but look what happens. It deforms areas uh, of the footage and this will lead to inaccurate tracking results. Stabilize after. Finally, any kind of blurs makes tracking more difficult. It relates to both. Uh, depth of field and motion blur. Depth of field is something we can't really add in post, but there is a workaround with motion blur. Tracking is better with sharp uh, points, sharp edges, and any motion blur makes it difficult to track. It's not impossible, it's just more difficult. One of the cheats I often use is what I call motion blur elimination. If you are a cinematographer, you probably know that shutter speed should be double of your frame rate in order to get that uh, natural looking motion blur. A lot of times if I know that I will need to track the scene, I shoot with faster shutter speeds uh, and I know that every frame will be crisp. That way I will have less problems with tracking the shots and I will add motion blur in post. This cheat obviously works only in uh, really well lit conditions because in dark conditions you can't really sacrifice that shutter speed. All right, enough of theory. Let's jump to PF track and I'll show you my typical tracking workflow. First thing you'll see is a lot of empty windows. We need to create our project in the bottom of the window. Name your project, click confirm and now on your upper right you can locate the sequence that you want to track. Drag it to the left section and this now became your source node. Important thing before you take any further steps. Double check the frame rate of your sequence. By default it is set to 25. If your frame rate is different, change it. I made this mistake a lot of times just to realize I have to start from scratch in the end. Painful. When you double check the frame rate, right click on your node. You see a lot of menus. For now we need the top one called tracking. Under this menu you can see you have auto track, user track, geometry track, target track and simple track and solve. A lot of times auto track works just fine, but sometimes you need to use user track. It's the node that allows you to track points manually, so you can choose which points to track. Let's try auto track first. At the bottom you have the tracking settings. I always set search mode to better accuracy because that way I have the most precise um, track. Also deformation, it depends on the scene, but in this particular one we will have points that will rotate, scale and skew. Everything else looks fine, let's click auto track. The process might take a while depending on the footage and the format you saved your sequence in. Here we go. Uh, my auto tracking is finished and straight away I see that it probably didn't do a good job. I have a lot of jumping points, that's because of the depth of field in the footage. So I'll delete these points straight away. By the way, any action in PF track uh, takes two presses. First to do the action and second one to confirm it. So to delete the points I need to click delete and then click delete again to confirm the action. I will scroll across the sequence and look for as many bad points as possible. There are a lot of functions that will help you to identify bad, bad tracking points. For instance, on your bottom right you have center view uh, function. If you will find a good track, select it, click center view and then scroll across the sequence and you will see if there are any jumping points. Also in your settings you have errors tab. This graph uh, shows you how bad are your points. In ideal world it should be around 0.1. You can trim that error graph and the uh, software will only use uh, points or segments of the sequence that are tracked uh, better, kind of. Does it make sense? Alright, auto track done. I cleaned some bad points. Let's try to solve this scene. Right click your auto track node, go to solving menu and use camera solver node. Here. Um, you also have some setting, depending on the footage you might want to set your translation to smooth or define rotation. Uh, it might seriously affect the quality of your track. This time I will leave it on default settings. Okay, click solve all 
and uh, let's scroll across the sequence. Auto track did well, but it's not perfect and it's rotating weirdly. So what I will do in auto track node, I will try to find more bad points and after that I will do a user track. All right, right click on your auto track node, go to tracking and choose user track this time. So, as usual, on the bottom you have all your settings. By default, all the points are set to a higher quality kind of um, mode. So just click create and choose the point you want to track. In this little window on the bottom, you can see your point zoomed in. So you can keep an eye on uh, your point if it's, you know, shifting, drifting or anything like that. It shifted here. So you can click on that little zoomed window and move your point to help it like so just put it back to the position and keep tracking that's what i meant motion blur makes it a bit more difficult you need to manually adjust your track points all right this point is all right now i will create a bunch of other uh, user track points here i have a quite sharp corner on my laptop but the software can't track it because it's a bit dark. You have the ability to manipulate your sequence on your left. Click that enhance tab. And in this particular case, I will adjust curves to make the uh, image brighter. You can also change colors, you know, key colors out, um, reduce noise and all that kind of stuff to get better track. I will just adjust curves. That will be enough and I'll keep tracking. Okay, I think I have enough uh, user tracked points and I think I'm ready to solve this scene. Right click, solver, camera solver, and let's solve all again. In your camera solver, you can set the point that will be a center of your scene. So click any point you want, any point you think is suitable and click set origin. And your scene plane will snap to that point. After that's done and you think your scene is solved properly, you can right click on your camera solve node and go to utilities menu and click orient scene. Orient scene node will help you to orient your scene properly, obviously. On your right, you have edit mode. You have translate, rotate, scale, fly, box. I usually use translate, rotate and access mode. You have three axes which you can enable one by one. Let's start with X. Align those lines uh, across any line in your scene that you think will be good X axis, like that. Now let's disable X axis and enable Y. These are vertical lines. Find any two vertical lines in your scene. All right, and now Z axis. Z is usually refers to depth, so find any lines that goes into the depth of your scene. And yeah, you can see, obviously, it's now oriented properly, which is cool. Let's scroll across the sequence. That's a decent solve here. I like it. Let's move the plane to the middle of my tablet. I think something's wrong with per perspective. And I actually know why. I gave you that wise advice of keeping notes of your lenses, but didn't specify the lens myself. <laughs> Let's go to camera solver node. And uh, here you have a focal length. Let's choose that we know the focal length and specify what, what was it. I used full frame 24 mils uh, lens on a camera that has a super 35 uh, sensor. It means that the crop factor is 1.6 and I need to multiply 24 by 1.6, which will give me 38.4 millimeters focal length. Let's click solve all, go back to our orient scene node. I will quickly reorient the scene. I think that's definitely better. Now uh, you can add test objects to your track. Right click on your orient scene uh, node, go to Geometry test object. Let's add thumb tag. Add to scene. And in interaction mode, you can select again, translate, rotate, all that stuff. But I usually use playset selected uh, feature. That way, uh, with your object selected, just click on any tracked point in your scene and it will snap to it. When you've finished, right click on your last node, export, 
export, specify where you want your file to be saved, specify the format and all that stuff and click export. You might want to play with scale because usually it's a big mess, but what I do, I usually scale it up or down in my 3D software rather than, you know, mess with these numbers here and export it 100 times. What I will do next was already explained in uh, how to add objects to your footage video. I will go to 3D software. I will add uh, my d desired objects in the scene, set up the render, render the sequence, then import it to Fusion, compose it, post-produce. I already recorded a tutorial about that. In this case, I've added my precious uh, drone, which I will introduce to you properly later in one of my next tutorials. For those of you who ask for a decent compositing tutorial, I will do one a bit later and we will have a deeper look at the de uh, things we, you should consider while compositing to make it look real and stuff. Now I will quickly show you how to track an object in your scene on top of your camera track. In the studio I grabbed a random box I had and I've added several green markers to it. Then I asked our producer Johnny to rotate it. In this scene we have camera moving as well as the object we want to track. So I obviously will use PF Track again because trust me, this tracking software is the best for this kind of stuff. So for this footage, I will do exactly same things we just did with the uh, first footage. But uh, this time I will use mask because we need to mask out Johnny. He's moving and we don't want to include his movements into camera movements. On your bottom left, you have mask button. Click it. These are your mask controls. I usually use Bezier Roto. Just draw a spline around your object. You can track it if you want, if let's say it's a moving car or something, but I usually just skip 20 frames and reposition the points of my, sp uh, of my mask. After I'm done, I'll just scroll across the footage and see if uh, the object is going out of the mask and adjust the mask accordingly. That looks good. Now we can go ahead and auto track our scene. This track wasn't so bad, let's try to solve it. Okay, auto track worked fine, but I will refine it with uh, the user track. Because I have a lot of corners in the scene which auto track didn't use by some reason. Okay, I think in this particular uh, case, auto track is spoiling more things that it helps. So I'll just delete it and use the user track. I will add a couple more points to the sofa. And that's what I meant by having a depth in your scene. See, when I move the camera, I have that parallax effect. So the sofa is closer to camera and it moves faster. And the wall further away moves, move, moves slower. And points on these uh, objects, they help software to recognize the space. Now when I have a decent uh, user track, I can auto track on top to kind of an enhance the quality. Yeah, I think it's definitely better. All right, our scene is tracked. Now let's track the box. In order to do so, let's create another user track uh, node. And here's the trick. Here on the bottom in the settings, you have groups. Have a look current group is set to camera. If you will click plus, you will create a new group of tracking points. Let's call this box. See, now you have two groups. Now, with a box group selected, let's start creating uh, tracking points on the box. I shot this sequence with my uh, motion blur elimination so it doesn't have as much motion blur as it would with the correct shutter speed that certainly helps a lot auto track or even uh, user track automatically doesn't work i have to position my track points every frame manually it is painful but results are always pleasing I'll just speed up the whole process of me placing markers to save our time and get back to you guys. Just to demonstrate you guys, if you would want to use auto track on tracking your object, you could do so, but you would need to create another mask. 
So I draw the mask around our box, click invert so that the track, uh, so that the software tracks only this area of the footage. And then if you are using green markers as I do in this footage, you can go to enhance tab and uh, sample that green color and you will key out only these markers. It doesn't work in this particular case, but it's a pretty good technique. See, auto tracks just don't work. It's just a big, big mess. No, I won't use auto track, obviously. <laughs> I'll keep adding user points and then get back to you. Oh my god, look how many markers I have. If I must confess, it took a fair amount of time. But that's basically it. That's the workflow with tracking an object. After everything is properly tracked, you can replace the box in uh, Johnny's hand with anything you want. And as you can see, PF Track did an amazing job. It's a pretty precise, like a really precise track of the box in his hands. The, the thing I love the most about this software is that it's a node-based uh, workflow. I can go in the beginning of my, uh, you know, node uh, 3 and change the initial scene track, then resolve the object, and I wouldn't have to redo anything. It would just recalculate, so it's always a non-destructive workflow. Love it. That's it. This is how it's done most of the times, but it's, as usual, depends on the shot, depends on the task. Some shots will take you 10 minutes to track, while others will take days to track. The sample with Johnny rotating the box took me more than half a day to track, while first footage we were working with took me less than uh, an hour. As usual, guys, hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching and I see you soon. Peace.